Tonight, Jerry Gretzinger concludes his cold case 13 investigation into the disappearance of a 13 year old girl from Glens Falls. Detectives have looked into the girl's mother, the mother's boyfriend, even a serial killer familiar to the capital region. But Jerry also uncovered a whole new possibility while reporting on the unsolved disappearance of Marianne Wesolowski. Paula Zalowski is 59. It has been 50 years since his sister Mary Ann vanished on August 18, 1971. His most vivid memories of that day are going to Haviland's Cove with his sister and a friend, discovering their mother's boyfriend with another woman, racing home to tell mom about it, and watching Mary Ann head back to the beach alone after their mother told her to bring the boyfriend home. So this is essentially the last place she was seen 50 years ago. Correct. With so much focus on Marianne's walk to the beach, Paul had forgotten their walk back from it until our interview. Walk back home and somewhere between here and there, there's another swimming hole. That other swimming hole is where Paul, Marianne and her friend encountered a group of young men. They had a Volkswagen bus, a dog. They were playing Frisbee near the water. You know, they were drinking and smoking and and they wanted my sister and the girlfriend to come back and they, and they said, oh, maybe later on. Paul could not recall where that other swimming hole was. The layout of Glens Falls has long since changed. Even their old house has been replaced by the post office. All new information for Detective Sergeant Miguel Chico, who has also considered another possibility. She may have been abducted by a serial killer. Just nine days before Marianne disappeared, a young boy from Schenectady, Thomas Muse, vanished. That case has never been solved. In 1974, 16-year-old Susan Zanta of Schenectady went out for a walk alone and was later found raped and murdered. She was innocent. Did you have to kill her? A man named Kenneth Yarder later pled guilty. In 1971, when Marianne disappeared, Yarder was working in Glens Falls. He's denied all involvement with the Wynn interview. Chico is not convinced. He's tried to communicate with Yarder recently with no luck. He's currently serving time in Florida after convictions in several states for kidnapping, rape, and robbery. The mystery of Marianne Wazolowski has only grown over the years. Could she have run away and stayed hidden all this time? I think for most people, it seems like, well, how, how could somebody pull that off? I would say, yeah, it's unrealistic. Was her mother involved, mom's boyfriend, that rowdy group of young men at the swimming hole? Or was she one of Kenneth Yarder's first victims? I would say the only way we're gonna get this resolved is if someone has some information that they come forward with. Police have never been able to identify the friend Marianne was with at Haviland's Cove that day. Early record keeping on the case was thin. She is someone they'd like to talk to. Paul hopes if anyone can share anything with investigators, they will come forward. It's just a cruel thing to do to know something and you don't and you don't share it with the with the law enforcement. It's just wrong on a human level. Investigators have given us this new age progression photo of what Marianne Wazolowski might look like today if she's still alive. If you know anything about her disappearance or remember seeing her on or around August 18th, 1971, contact police or email coldcase13 at WNYT.com. I'm Jerry Gretzinger.